Hello everyone and welcome to a to one well, more zero K exhibition matches. A new a new day of zero K exhibition matches. I'm your host Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, and we have an exhibition match of very top level players, Manu Twelve and Golda, pretty much the two best players in this entire game, who are going at it on the new map Mechan and Sonia. So Golda going for jump bots, and Manu Twelve going for gunships. A a start I've heard is actually really strong in this map. I can't imagine, you know, it's, you don't have to go through as many of the hills, but then again, this wasn't unique to Mecha and Sonya. I mean, Ad and Sonya and Mecha and Sonya have very similar ramp structures, except for this straight line ground path, which isn't in the regular Ad and Sonya. It is in Mecha and Sonya. Anyway, Gota very quickly setting up for a rapid expansion attempt. Getting getting constables everywhere, just making sure they can expand everywhere, because why not? I mean it's it's definitely a good idea. Actually I never noticed that this ramp right here that is basically the access to the top plateau. In the regular Ad Ansonia, you could not get up here without spiders or jump bots, so it's a good change. I like the fact that you can actually access that with anyone now. Anyway, Manu 12, they are only expanding over to the southwest. Very quickly getting up some locusts, and I am not sure what they're planning on doing with that. I mean, obviously they're going to be planning on going for an attack, it's just more specifically where. Are they going to be going for attacks along the side? Are they going to try to go for some kind of strike on like, frontline radar expansions? I can't expect they'd be going for the back lines, but then again, Gota is not building a lot of defenses. So, Mana 12 at the very least can see what's going on and see that very little has been defended against, so hey, why not just build up? Gota does have puppies around the map, and those will cause problems for the Locusts. That is, Gota's entire defensive structure is puppies. And it's not a bad idea. It's just a little bit... You know. Ooh, actually, that, is, that worked out pretty well. Okay. By cost, that does work out. But it is still one of those things where, you, I mean, you can't really build constables to rebuild the constables while the puppies are being built. So, yeah, a little bit limited. One constable already down. Two locusts have gone down in the process. Third one goes down to follow, and that does leave Mano 12 without anything in Gota's base for a small while. And Gota, just, just been expanding this entire time. They have not worried about this at all. They are getting e-stalled hard. I'm saying, now we're not seeing them reclaim any of the crates yet, which I find bizarre. I mean, the fact that Gota of all people is e-stalling is actually kind of surprising. Or not e-stalling, oh, yeah, they are e-stalling. Mano 12 it has that as an advantage they can use. Given that their economy is working out perfectly, they do not have to worry about anything. They can just... They can just push. I mean, the Locusts are going to be going... Eh, going and do some damage. It's not really going to be that effective. The problem is that there is there are Stardusts all over now. There's Puppies all over. The Locusts can't really raid wherever they like to. Manu 12... I mean, they're behind on expansion, but they are still doing okay when it comes to the energy, and that's the biggest thing. Golda's energy and production is way behind Mano 12's, and Mano 12 can take full advantage of that. With Golda right now, they've got the uh, solo collectors going to the main base. They have them going in one of their expansions, reclaiming some trees. Oh, Alright, so it's not totally hopeless, but it's still way behind where it needs to be. Mana 12 doesn't even need to raid. They are way ahead right now. They just take one or two more caretakers, and that is going to do it. The only thing, of course, being that Mana 12 is playing gunship. Which, I mean, you kind of you know, build a few anti-air units and don't have to worry about for a while. Gota playing a little bit risky by focusing entirely on puppies. I mean, it makes sense for the Locusts, but switch over to Nimbus or switch over to... I guess, I don't know, any, any other factory, really. And the puppies will become way less useful. But they are here. 
They are doing their job, at least partially, but not well enough. Downside of puppies, they don't hit all the same locust. It is only going to be so effective. And the lotus, lotuses are helping with the locusts, getting rid of some of them. But still, that's a great bit of information for Mana 12. They now know, oh, hey, there were puppies there. There's really only puppies on defense. I've still got a bunch of... I've still got a bunch of locusts to work with. Wait, what? Drifting. Okay, I gotta look out for this. Apparently, there's some drifting issue that comes up with the... with the locusts. Did not really notice in particular. Oh, yeah. How about that? I mean, that sort of seems normal to me, but... No matter! Gorda just trying to do some forward anti-air. Not... I mean, I like the idea. You're making sure that your opponents can't really escape their base. I... Would have expected Golda to go for a chainsaw rather than a razor, considering the circumstances, but razor's not a well, razor's not a complete idea. That's sort of the problem. It doesn't matter how good or a bad idea it is, it it got taken out. But even if it was done, it doesn't have an especially long range. Oh I see right, because the air idle state yeah, okay. No, the air idle state air idle state, which one is Oh shit, they're not wrong. Okay, so anyone who's watching this, who happens to be playing later in the future, like, I'm assuming this hasn't been sent back into the past, though given my casting of Acron, it wouldn't surprise me. The UI has actually been adjusted. The default UI in the dev build has been adjusted to allow for the strafe state to be visible directly. And I think you might actually be able to configure that. I'm not 100% sure. But I can't remember where the heck that was. And... Where the heck was that? I just feel weird. Okay, because there are... There basically is a way to select what com what commands are here, what states are here. Or like whether or not your move state, fire state has three states or two states. And I can't remember the exact thing for that, and that's not relevant to the game right now. We'll check it after the game's over. What is relevant is the use of Nast to get rid of the Stardust. Nicely done, Mana 12. Good thinking there. Though Gold, on the other hand, has switched over to Pyros, meaning that a switch to another factory or... Well, another factory as is, is not going to be as effective. I, I like the fact that Gold has kind of realized, well, you know... I mean, obviously Gold has realized Mana 12 is going to be switching at some point. You don't generally see gunships last the entire game. Though, to be honest, this is actually lasting a significantly longer time than I would have expected. Like, gunship start is not something you see come up super often. And it's often something you see people switch out of. But here we are. Half a dozen, or a dozen locusts, half a dozen gnats on top of that. Still raiding around the map. A switch to Cloaky has happened, but only for heavy units. Is that purely night? That is purely night so far. Just infinitely spawning knights. Same time, Mana 12 losing a fair bit of their energy infrastructure, but not really enough. They have a fusion plant in the main base, it doesn't matter. Golda, on the other hand, would be entirely reliant on their solar plants. And also, of course, on making sure that they can keep Mana 12's infrastructure down, which they are actually planning on doing. Are they doing a split attack on... No, they're not. What the heck? I was hoping the bombers would be hitting every single metal extractor. Ah, no, going for a commander snipe. And getting a commander tonight. Mana 12 losing their commander, but already prepared. Got the storage up as is. Oh, oof. Got rid of a wasp for free on top of that, but... Mana 12 still way ahead when it comes to army. Still way ahead when it comes to their ability to project force across the map. I mean, yeah, bombers coming in once, once in a while. Gorda's commander. Stun. Getting hit down. Locusts do not die as a result. Neither do the knights, actually. Very effective raid going in on the front lines. Now it's a question of how to survive that, and Golda's... Golda's at the commander, they have lost the front line. Manor 12, on the other hand, wasn't really relying on the commander for the front line. And again, they're playing with gunships, they can fly around and do whatever the heck they want. On the other hand, Golda relying on throwing in planes after the fact. I mean, a few pot shots here and there. It's not the worst thing in the world, I mean... Now they've got raptors up. It's just that... 
is it going to matter? Locust coming in here. Take out some caretakers. Possibly take out factors. I seriously doubt it. But the caretakers are damaged enough, and they are going for the factory. Is this, is this a suicide mission? No, man. Do not throw them. Do not throw those units in to die. All right. Got them out of there. Took out the caretakers. Took some losses. But the Locust Army is still at least somewhat alive. Decimated, but alive. Actually, more than decimated. It's cut in half. That was one of those things, I think I pointed out before, that the idea of decimation is actually really minor in the context of an RTS game because you don't have, like, you don't have that many units, and the idea of unit morale isn't something that exists, except for, like, Dawn of War. And even then, I don't think unit... If you were to lose a tenth of the units, I don't think it would make that big of a difference. At any rate, coming in here, the puppies are going on their typical suicide mission and finding finding knights. Not a bad choice. Knights do not have splash damage, so they can't really deal with the puppies. They're kind of screwed. Puppies are awesome counter to that for that reason. I would have hoped that Mana 12 would stick Knight Reaver together, because that is a good combo for dealing with things like puppies coming at them. But alas, that did not happen, and Mana 12, though... They did lose a fairly large chunk of their army. They are still way ahead. I mean, they have twice the economy of Gulda. They have this roving band of locusts. And plenty of anti-air in case the bombers try to come in and intercept them. Or the raptors, for that matter. On the other hand, Gulda has jumping flamethrowers. Because pyros are a strong unit that do a lot of damage. And get rid of your opponent's storage. On top, oh, on top of the puppies. Okay, this is getting scary. The knights are really not the right unit to use. Are we going to see switch to reavers? No. No, we are not. Yeah, this is going to be tough. Puppies coming in here, and that's all they needed. Puppies coming here, blow up. Blow the pylon, get rid of the, some of the overdrive, but then... Don't manage to protect the pyros. That's huge. How much is how much is that? Give me a worker here. Almost a thousand metal on top of the other one. Well, well, one point two k that was mutual damage. But basically, a thousand metal gifted to their opponents, give or take. That is that is huge. With Mana Twelve already ahead of Golda in terms of metal and I mean, production is basically both players using everything they have. So at this point. Mana 12 can just reclaim this no problem. I mean, Mana 12 has double the necessary production. This is... This is pretty huge. Mana 12, unfortunately, is not in the best position thanks to these Raptors, but fortunately for them, they are, again, ahead economically. I just don't understand why they're relying entirely on Knights. There's a lot of good stuff Knights can do, but dealing with Migrators is not it. Golda is just running in with the right counters for everything, which... Yeah, that is typically Golda. Like, there's one thing that Golda is really good at. It is keeping the units alive and keeping a good understanding of what units to use in a given situation. Golda is, or has been historically, pretty much the Micro King. Or Micro God, as the name would suggest. But, yeah, Micro specifically. They, they are a really strong player, but a lot of their strength is being able to handle their armies exceptionally well. Both in terms of composition and micromanagement. And that is something that you can't really use against an army that's just generally superior. Like, in terms of numbers. There's, uh, there's a limit to how much you can do, and that limit has clearly been reached. I mean, the Knights... They do get countered by puppies quite well, but the puppies are only coming in so fast. They get countered by the moderators pretty well, but the locusts come, can come in and start distracting the moderators, giving the knights time to walk up and kill them. And ultimately, Mana 12 just has just about double the metal economy of Golda. And plenty of reclaim that hasn't even been taken yet. Some of it is in the process of being taken. Mana 12 is just poised to win this. I, really, I this is the last stand. This is it. Mana 12 pushing in with the knights. There is enough moderators that should be able to stop this wave of knights, but Locust coming in to provide a little extra support. An extra wave of knights coming in from behind. 
Once that regroups, honestly, I kind of wish that Men of Twelve would have regrouped that in the first place, but they are doing so now. Once those knights regroup, there is not much that can be done here. Only as many moderators exist. Unfortunately, Jump Bot versus Cloaky. The moderators are a good choice against knights, but they aren't necessarily the best choice. Though, 350 metal, 2400, and puppies. Are oh, those puppies? Puppies deal 410 damage. So, that would be four, no, six puppies to get rid of the knight. And it's not the most efficient thing in the world, but it would be cost efficient, and the knights can't really stop puppies. But then again, the support forces would stop them. Also, it's more important to have bodies on the ground. Like, they, Godo wants to have something that actually defends and then is maintained throughout. And it's not like moderators are a bad choice. Once the numbers are up, as they are now, they are a great choice. It's just that that intermediate period where you're trying to desperately build up a defense force. Yeah, a couple moderators won't fend off half a dozen knights, but half a dozen moderators will. That being said, it's just hard to find the forces. The bomber's going to come in to get rid of the locusts. Planes can bomb gunships, just for reference. It's one of those weird quirks of the game, but yeah, you, you can actually bomb gunship units with the airplane factory. It's it's kind of funny, and it totally works. The weather makes a difference in this case. Well, that's clearly not to, not to be seen. That that's not going to happen. There's that's eh, that's done. The ravens are all shot out of the sky thanks to the gremlins, and that is. Basically it. Goldo, do they have anything up their sleeve? The moderators are doing a, a fabulous job holding the line, but it's only so many, and the economics disadvantage so huge, I don't see what difference it's going to make. Man of 12 is just building locust after locust after locust, and not really looking poised to stop. I mean, this is... This is it. Man of 12 just ripping apart all of Goda's economy, and Goda... I feel like this... Kind of just came down to the fact that they didn't really set up strong air defense. I think they expected Mano 12 would switch off gunships quickly rather than keeping gunships the entire duration of the match. I'm curious if Goda thought about using a chainsaw. I mean, they are expensive, but they are very strong area denial. Or for that matter, I mean, maybe not a toad, because toads are expensive. I can see why you wouldn't go for a toad. Actually, no, 500, never mind, they aren't that expensive. Yeah, like, I don't know, two or three toads around the map, maybe a chainsaw near your main base, or in the front line somewhere. But honestly, I think the biggest thing was the fact that Gota just excessed a lot early on. Like, Gota had a huge amount of energy, or metal excessed. Check after the game. And that's never good. I mean, the use of puppies was interesting, but yeah, this... I th honestly think that a toad or two would have been more effective strategy. Early game, the puppies make sense. Just a handful of locusts. But mid-game, just spend the 500 metal on a toad. I mean, that would have been 800-ish metal worth of puppies right there. 900 metal worth of puppies. One or two toads would have had much more success getting rid of the locusts. And honestly, Manu 12 could have easily swapped off locusts to lotuses, so, sorry, not lotuses, to nimbuses. Well, I wouldn't have switched off to a revenant, but I could have. Like, but nimbus is the main threat that would be basically uncounterable about puppies. The puppies wouldn't be able to get into range, the nimbuses would be able to just rain down death. Goda was not prepared for a switch, basically. They were prepared for dealing with locusts, and they seem to have had some hypothetical preparations for dealing with, like, a skirmisher switch or assault switch, which I mean, the moderators kind of do. But they had no, and they had some preparations with the pyros for dealing with a raider switch, but they just had no preparations for dealing with the locusts continuing or with stronger gunships being played. Well, anyways, it feels like this game was almost more of a game where the players were kind of running up against some of the changes that were supposed to be quality of life changes to the game recently. I'm actually really curious. I don't think Gold is watching this, but they might end up watching the replay afterwards. Honestly, I'm kind of a little disappointed. 
Now, note that the way that the cutting eye has been changed is that the units will basically, if they're told to hold a particular position, they will hold that... Sorry, not hold position, non-hold position mode. If they're told to be at a particular position, they will back up for a while trying to avoid getting hit, and then eventually will fight back towards that position. If they're kiting away. Anyway, metal excess from Golda. Wow! 3,600 metal from Golda excessed all in the early game, too. Where it's even more relevant as a percentage of the overall metal produced. Yeah, like, Manitov and Golda were even in terms of production up until about five minutes into the game. But only even in terms of use up until about two minutes into the game. I mean, Golda, true to what I was mentioning before about them being really good about micromanagement, they did maintain an advantage in terms of units killed. If they hadn't accessed early on, they probably would have won the game. Just because that excess would have gone into an army, which, I mean, seriously, 3,000 metal worth of army, when you consider that Golda was already maintaining an attrition advantage that worked out somewhere in the... Well, ultimately somewhere in the 5k range, but even starting out was a few hundred. Add that with what the army value would have been with an extra 3,000 metal worth of army, it would have been huge. I think Golda could have easily taken that if they hadn't excess if they hadn't excess metal early on. Everything after the two three minute mark was them playing catch up, and I don't think they quite realized how far behind they were. Also, as was pointed out, there was no rearm pad for a while. I mean, there was eventually an air pad after some time, but at first, no. Anyhow, that is that, and today is going to be a day of purple games. So our next game is going to be Kshatriya and Pet Turtle, and is going to be on the brand new map Anvilwood. Actually, I think this current one was a request, though it did work out to be on a new map. The rest of these were maps I picked. I figured that let's do a purple, let's do purple games for a while. So wait, that's not right. Hang on. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Catch and Petrol is next. But yeah, I wanted to do purple games on the new maps. Just, you know, I just want to see how they play out. So yeah, stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a couple of minutes.